So what's fascism? This is tough because fascism is usually what people call almost any political opinion they don't like. Even as far back as World War II, people were calling Hitler's Germany, Mussolini's Italy, Franco's Spain, and Imperial Japan fascist. Not to mention all the other countries in Europe and South America which have been called fascist. George Orwell, who wrote 1984, said in 1944 that if you examine the press, you will find that there is almost no set of people, certainly no political party or organized body of any kind, which has not been denounced as fascist in the past ten years. I have heard it applied to farmers, shopkeepers, social credit, corporal punishment, fox hunting, bullfighting, Kipling, Gandhi, Chiang Kai-shek, homosexuality, youth hostels, astrology, women, dogs, and I do not know what else. The bad at British accent is a free bonus. If you look at different descriptions of fascism, you do see some common themes, though they need explaining. 1. A huge focus on nationalism and standing for your country. Not just being patriotic, but way beyond that, to the point that it's supposed to be the most important thing in people's lives. 2. Being really invested in the military and wanting to use it for foreign conquest and permanent war. 3. Plus often organizing the party and government in a military-looking way. 4. Putting everyone beneath a strong leader who runs everything with absolute power and a lack of rights or civil liberties. This is something you see in many kinds of political systems too, but it's definitely part of fascism. 5. Using violence in politics, though other types of dictatorships do this as well. 6. Glorifying youth and strong masculinity. 7. Pushing people to conform to the national ideal way of living to build a single national identity. Not just a repressive society, but a place where everyone is trying to be exactly the same or they get in trouble. 8. Being obsessed with tradition, even if it's a weird mashup of traditions, and rejecting modern life, like really angry Amish people. But since fascism is fuzzy and people argue about this, let's go straight to the horse's mouth and quote Benito Mussolini's Italian National Fascist Party. They complain that socialists diminish the moral value of war, they say that fascism is built around the fatherland, an idea that gives people a reason for existing and is the final outcome of all history. They talk about the power of youth. They talk about the need for violence and the creation of squads in a military fashion. Fashion might mean organized like soldiers or, since this is Italy, it might mean militantly fashionable. The Italian fascists also talk about the freedom that comes from being conquered by the law and renouncing individualistic, wasteful desires. Really, they want to reject democracy and individualism itself as the source of modern problems. They talk of the spiritual power of rejecting materialism and seeing life as a struggle. And on a more practical level, the Italian fascists wanted an eight-hour workday, a minimum wage, expansion and improvement of the national railroads, lowering the retirement age from 65 to 55, a national militia, a national policy to further Italian culture, taxing the rich, and seizing all religious property. In Italy, where the Pope lives, seizing church property would get you a lot of moolah. They also nationalized most of the economy under councils that included the government, supposed experts, and control of labor unions. So that's fascism. What's Nazism? First, you should know that Nazi is actually an abbreviation for National Socialist, which is short for National Socialist German Workers' Party, which is in German, so it's one word that's like six miles long. Probably they shortened it because people kept passing out at rallies due to a lack of oxygen. Nazism is easier to nail down because there was just one Nazi country, Germany. The Nazis were really focused on racial superiority and purity, particularly the idea that Jewish people needed to be removed from the German people and state because they were weakening and corrupting it. The Nazis were also focused on undoing the defeat of World War I and collecting all Germans into one country. Not just getting their land and power back, but expanding the German people into new territory and colonies so that they could have more pure Germans, so they could take over more land, and so on. All of this came from the idea of social Darwinism, which had started near the end of the 1900s and was popular all around the world, including many places in the U.S. Basically, social Darwinism was the idea that natural selection affected people too, and so weakness needed to be bred out of humanity. Poor people, mentally handicapped people, and criminals, among others, all needed to reproduce less so that healthy, well-off people could reproduce more and keep strengthening the human gene pool. Some people, like the Nazis, didn't just apply this to individuals, but to races, which they saw as being scientific categories. Good races needed to be made better and avoid being ruined by intermixing with bad races. The Nazis were willing to end immigration and create a whole system of laws designed to give second-class status to any racial group they saw as inferior. 
Eventually, as you surely heard, they decided that second-class status and kicking people out wasn't enough. They also pushed for national government control over politics and the press, as well as having more central control of the national government by one person, Hitler. On the more practical side, they wanted to ensure all jobs went to Germans first, that any welfare required work, that companies had profit sharing, that Germany created better old age pensions, they wanted support for small businesses, land reform, rent reduction, the death penalty for more crimes, free public education into college, public support for mothers, making what colleges taught more practical, an end to child labor, mandatory sports and physical fitness, and communal ownership of large department stores. If you don't know what a department store is, ask your parents. The Nazis also organized their economy into trusts that partnered companies in an industry with the government. What's the difference between fascism and Nazism? There are some differences, but whether you think the two are totally different depends on how important you think those differences are. You probably noticed a lot of similarities between what the fascists focused on and what the Nazis wanted. Neither group fully delivered on their promises, but were focused on the version that came to power and had the most popularity, because that's what people chose when there were still elections. You've got the same militarism, the same focus on conquest and national glory, the same lack of interest in individualism, and the same obsession with a strong leader at the top. There are plenty of people who study this who don't think fascism can be nailed down as tightly as Nazism, but they generally agree that they have these things in common. Nazism is like a supercharged and more specific version of fascism. People also argue about whether fascism is inherently racist the way that Nazism is. There are fascist laws about race, though they are less severe than the Nazi ones. Fascist governments were also willing to speak out publicly against Jews and talked about the differences between superior and inferior races. At the same time, fascist governments were generally a lot less interested in helping kill Jews, and so fewer Jews died there as opposed to in areas the Nazis controlled. But they still killed tons of their own people based on political beliefs and membership in specific groups. So you have to decide how much of a distinction you want to make between being racist and also killing people versus killing people because of your racism. There are a lot of interesting connections between communism, fascism, and Nazism as well. Historians have serious academic arguments about whether you can say they're sibling ideas. Communism is older than the other two, but they all hit their stride in the early 20th century, after the changes in war that World War I brought about, the harm caused by the Great Depression and World War I's death toll, and the creation of the first mass media. It's easy to forget now that before radio got big in the 1920s, you couldn't communicate out to everyone in real time. And that was more than 70 years before the internet, which gave people a widespread way to talk back and to each other in real time. So draw your own conclusions about how similar you think these different philosophies are. Finally, do people use these labels correctly when they're talking about today's politics? You can decide that for yourself, but it doesn't seem like many people today are pushing for the full enchilada of any of these philosophies. Just pieces of them. Enchilada pieces. This metaphor kind of got away from me. Plus, you'll notice that some of the things all these groups have pushed for are now common, like universal old age pensions and a minimum wage, which makes it even more complicated. As George Orwell said back in the 40s, people just use these words to label anything they don't like. The closest you get to accuracy is that some people still call themselves socialists, though socialism is the fuzziest bucket of all. Man, the fuzzy buckets would be a great band name. So this was mostly focused on the history of these ideas. There's an argument about whether a modern version of fascism is making a comeback. I'll cover that in a future video that tries to explain what the alt-right is and what they believe in. It'll mostly be focused on the USA because that's what I'm best qualified to talk about, but it will briefly touch on Europe too. And there you have it. As always, subscribe to be notified when new videos come out and sources are in the description. The next video will be on what it means when people say China has unfair trading practices.